Welcome everyone to our first lecture. Please silence. Thank you. Okay, welcome everyone to our first lecture for the web based mobile app development. And uh, I am uh, Luca Piras. I am a senior lecturer here at the university, and I am also program leader of ITBSC. And I am very happy to see uh, as many people uh, in this uh, class. And uh, some of you have uh, I have uh, already seen. Uh, during the computer science activities for ITBCC program induction, etc. So it's a pleasure for me to have uh, all of you here. And uh, so today, what we will do uh, will be just to quickly, very cl quickly introduce, uh, introduce uh, our model, because as uh, I think uh, most of you know, I have sent an email last Thursday. So uh, I hope that uh, as many as possible, I've already started watching the videos that I recorded because there is a more detailed introduction for, uh, for our module and also many other videos for guiding you towards different guidelines, rules, etc. So I really suggest you to uh, start having a look at them, even you have not already done yet, but maybe some of you already watched those. But uh, no worries, because uh, during uh, all the weeks that uh, we are going through, we will have uh, the time for uh, checking all those aspects in detail. So I will refresh uh, all uh, the concepts uh, for you. And uh, in practice, in any case, also from your side, uh, if you have dApps also take as a reference, of course, the videos that I have put. Because when you have a specific uh, issue, let's say some dApps, et cetera, probably there is a video that uh, can help you as a first instance. But then uh, if you have uh, uh, some uh, further issues, uh, just uh, let me know. And uh, during the lecture, we can have, of course, uh, questions, but uh, it is just one hour time. So instead in the lab, it's two hours time. So maybe let's keep uh, the longer question and the more complicated question for uh, the lab. And then after this quick uh, intro, what we will do will be to start the, let's say, the real lecture that is related to refreshing JavaScript and starting giving a look with the first framework, framework that we will use uh, uh, in uh, uh, our module that is called Vue.js. What we will do during the lecture, uh, the, the session, let's say during uh, the entire module, will be to have an approach that is uh, project-based. So this means that uh, we will start from uh, the first weeks, maybe today not because uh, it is just a refresh of JavaScript and a very quick introduction about uh, the first framework, but uh, starting from the second week onwards, we will uh, take uh, an example, an e-commerce application, and we will start uh, creating uh, piece by piece, uh, uh, week by week, uh, different functionalities. So we will add uh, week by week on top uh, of our application new elements. And uh, uh, we will do this uh, in a professional way, similar to uh, how it's done uh, in uh, industry settings, uh, in companies, etc. Uh, so um, I hope that the skills that we will achieve at the end will be very useful for uh, having a very good job in the industry. Okay, so uh, let's start. So this is more or less what I just said. So let's keep uh, this slide. Uh, so this is the part where we quickly reintroduce the module, apart from the video, as I said, where there are more details. So now I will go straight to the point. So there are different uh, approaches for developing uh, mobile applications. There are the native app development approaches and the hybrid app development approaches. We will go for the second one, the hybrid one. And now we have a quick look about what those are. This is what I was saying before to you. So as you can see here, of course, what we are doing now is a quick recap about these slides and video. But uh, you have so many other uh, videos, as I said before, and maybe during this lecture, I will point you out for what to see uh, in what uh, circumstance. So for instance, uh, uh, this is related also to blended learning, because uh, as you know, we will have uh, uh, the mo mo most of our lectures will be on campus, but we will also be online once. And in any case, I will let you know when those uh, will uh, uh, when we will be online. In any case, there is this video, then uh, about the reading list, uh, about uh, the handbook, uh, of course, uh, 
Then book is the other most important thing about the module. So there, there are the guidelines, the assessment on the details that we will see also together. But it's a good for you starting to watching the videos, but also reading the book. So you are aware about all the rules and all the aspects. Then there is the learning planner at the end of the handbook. Uh, that is really important because so you know week by week what you will do, if there are there will be assessment or not, etc. But again, we will see those together later. This is very important because this is about uh, extension, the federal security circumstances. So of course uh, it's uh, important to overlook late penalty incentive system. So there is also the possibility. If you, uh, let's say, you have the coursework as soon as possible, you can also uh, obtain points because you have been very rapid to complete uh, uh, different parts. And uh, the last one, this is probably the most important one because describe you the full demonstration process for the coursework. So you need to uh, comply with all of these rules, of course. But we will come to this uh, uh, very soon in the next weeks. Uh, start having uh, a look at uh, this. And now we have a quick overview of uh, the module, as I said. So I introduced uh, the different approaches. There is the native one and the hybrid one. Going straight to the point, the native one is uh, I want to create an application for Android. And so I use uh, certain languages like this one, tools and frameworks, or I want to develop for iOS. And so I use uh, those other ones. So the point is you are focusing on one platform and the app that you will develop with this approach will run exclusively on that platform. So for instance, you, I don't know, you use Java Kotlin for creating your application for an Android platform. And what happens is that if you install it on Android, there it will run. If you try to install it in iOS, there it will not run. So what are the advantages and the disadvantages? The advantages is that um, you have the support of all the functionalities related to that specific platform. And so the, applica the resulting application can be very fast. And you can use also all the hardware feature of that platform. But again, as I said, as I said uh, if you move to iOS, you have to repeat the process from, from scratch. Instead, with hybrid app development, that is what we will cover in our module, uh, you create the application once and it will run in Android, iOS, and in general, good news, also in any platform that can support a browser. Because in practice, what we do is to create a web application. And so, of course, all of these platforms and also many others like a smart TV, uh, other devices, small devices, et cetera, with sensor and so on, uh, can, uh, can run a browser. So nowadays there are so many platforms that have this capability. So as it is clear to, to you, of course, uh, at this point uh, is that uh, probably in most of the cases, this is uh, a better approach because uh, uh, you reduce the effort of the developer of the company the money that are spent for developing application because after having this, then you will have an application that run in, in practice most of the platforms, as I said, compared to the other approach that is one app for one platform. So this is uh, enough to motivate uh, this approach. In any case, there are also disadvantages. So if you need to access to all the hardware resources, probably it is best uh, better to uh, go for uh, the other approach. But also if you use this approach, there could be some specialized uh, additional libraries that you could use. And uh, uh, as disadvantage is that uh, the hybrid apps can be slightly uh, um, slower than uh, the other apps. So uh, now that uh, we have uh, at least an high-level idea, we can uh, start uh, having a look uh, also, this is a further motivation. So this is also really important for you because of course uh, the application and the approach that you will learn, all the tools uh, and frameworks that you will use uh, are used uh, in uh, real application, in real uh, situations uh, for big, uh, by big companies like the ones you see here, these are the related apps. And uh, in practice, so you will have the uh, skills that can be very useful for 
having a very good job also potential in a, a very big companies. Um, these are some examples of uh, uh, application that have been developed in this way. And this is uh, our, at least uh, um, what we will have at the end of the module. This is just a screenshot, but it is running for an, a platform. And as I said, we will use a project-based approach. So just quickly, also the books, it is a, a kind of recap, but now I focus more on what you need now in this first fix in the first part of the module for creating the front end of the application. Because after in the second part, we will create the back end. In the third part, we will turn our application into a mobile application. So in the first part, uh, we create a front end, the front end of our application, and these uh, are the books that uh, you need. Of course, you have also a video where I go through the full uh, reading list. So you know, starting from now, what are the books that uh, we use in the different parts of the model. Um, most of them are, of course, available on the library or also uh, can be used online. Let's say. Uh, in relation to the, this, this first part, I suggest uh, you, first of all, to do, start doing uh, a kind of a refresh of JavaScript. Because, uh, as you know, all our applications, uh, uh, sorry, all our tools, uh, frameworks that we use for developing our app are based on JavaScript. So it is important that you have at least some basics uh, and intermediate knowledge about JavaScript. Otherwise, it can be a little bit uh, uh, more difficult for you. Actually, we will start uh, um, giving uh, um, VJS and uh, from scratch, that is a, a specific framework for um, that it is JavaScript based, but you can start learning also uh, VJS without, let's say, knowing too much about JavaScript, but still uh, you need to refresh a little bit. So, this book is very good start uh, from uh, from zero in practice. And so uh, it is uh, written in a not too difficult way. It is, uh, uh, there is uh, like a narrative introducing step by step the different uh, concepts, etc. Reaching also a little bit advanced uh, aspects. But also in, uh, in our lab, uh, at least in this week, we will uh, do some exercises for refreshing JavaScript. Then, uh, uh, from the second week, uh, but actually today we will cover also the first uh, chapter of this book. Uh, we will go through uh, the chap most of the chapters of uh, this book, VJS in Action. It is uh, related to, of course, the framework uh, that I told you for the front end. Ah, one important thing <clears throat> is that uh, here there is a GitHub repository from the author. And so uh, there, uh, there is a code that is covered uh, chapter by chapter. So also this can be useful uh, for, uh, for learning. So pay attention also to it. Okay, <clears throat> any questions so far? Yeah, please. Oh, is there any, 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 any resources that can help us in, in, in the module, like any books, anything on email that can help us? That can you said the books or what uh, kind of resources? Uh, no, I mean, like anything in that you can help us, that you can help us, that you can help us, and I'm working that, that's something, that's something you can help, something like that. Like, uh, in the module page, uh, uh, there will be all uh, the elements that you need. I mean, uh, you could also just uh, go through the slides, uh, but this uh, lecture is recorded, so after this uh, lecture, I will put also the recording on the module page, and I will put also in most of the um, weeks uh, also tutorial where uh, I go through what uh, practically what uh, we are we are covered in the lecture, and so you can also uh, follow that. Then, uh, of course, uh, also online there are many uh, let's say resources that you feel free to go through those uh, those can help. Uh, but if uh, if you have some doubts, just uh, ask me, and uh, I can suggest if something is okay or maybe go through another resource, etc. So this should be enough for uh, learning everything. But so yeah, just let me know later if uh, you want more. Okay. So um, going through, let me drink uh, water, <laughs> sorry. So 
Now we start uh, the real part uh, um, of the lecture. So what happens is that, of course, uh, as your colleague uh, asked, uh, it was a good question, we need tools. We cannot uh, directly uh, create uh, a complex application. And you will see that uh, we start from uh, simple things, but later uh, things uh, will be, need to be integrated and everything will become very complicated. So we need to introduce many tools. The first tool that we introduce is uh, the integrated development environment that we will use. It is called uh, Visual Studio Code. That I think that in any case, uh, as uh, your uh, colleague uh, is enjoying this news, uh, uh, most of you have used it previously. In some models, please raise your hand if uh, you, are, you know Visual Studio Code. Okay. So yeah, that's good. So I'll from the class or maybe a little bit more. Okay, so let's speak uh, in general about uh, IDEs and then we see something in detail of Visual Studio Code. So also in this case, we start from scratch. So for the ones that are totally new for about uh, Visual Studio Code, no worries because we start from scratch. So first of all, why do we need uh, these uh, powerful uh, environments? We need those because uh, as you know, in uh, industry settings, uh, this can support the professional developers. So you need to be ready uh, to uh, know at least one or more, depending maybe also on uh, the language, etc. because uh, some are, uh, can support better for certain aspects, uh, other for other languages, etc. So in any case, there are also common functionalities that uh, you need uh, to know. For instance, it, uh, uh, those can help in relation to refactoring, that is uh, when you have, uh, let's say, a version of the application that is stable, but you are not happy with the design, and so you do not change the functionality, but uh, you want to improve the design, keeping the same behavior of the application. But in this way, uh, it, this is helpful for you for making the application to evolve, because, uh, um, um, the design is better, and so you can put your hands in the code in a quicker way, etc. And also, if you collaborate in teams with other colleagues, so of course, uh, this can be useful for everyone. For everyone. And uh, then there are other aspects like uh, auto completion, etc. So you type your code, and uh, um, the tool completes it for you, or give uh, a number of suggestions, or other automated aspects. Formatting of the code, uh, doing the bugging for finding bugs and fixing those, etc. So everything that, that can speed up for you to identify as soon as possible the, the issues and to fix the, uh, those as soon as possible. And also for versioning of your application. You will see later that we will introduce uh, Git and GitHub, but maybe it's uh, too early for speaking about it. So there are so many important aspects, including also visual aids or annotating the code, or highlighting the code. So, so many things, and we will start seeing uh, some of them. Okay, what uh, environments we have available? Sometimes we call uh, also them just like editors, but some of them are very powerful. These ones are more uh, like editors, and uh, as you can see in this uh, line, uh, if uh, tools are in this part, uh, those uh, are uh, slow. And instead, the, the ones here are small, uh, fast contracted because they are small with less features, etc. Instead, in this line, the ones that are in this part are poor in terms of uh, support for the developer because it is mostly manual the activity that you need to do. Then you have other ones that can support you in an automated way. And so we can see that there are all of these that beans, Eclipse, that are very popular, etc., but also other ones. And uh, these uh, are very powerful for supporting the, the developer, but as you can see, are in this part. So these are very large with so many functionalities, so much support, which is very good, but uh, these are very slow. And in other, in the other ways can, uh, let's say, uh, make uh, the developer uh, slower. But yeah, it depends. Maybe the advantage is uh, thanks to the automation, uh, to the automatic support. Then, the ones that are uh, in this part uh, are uh, the ones that are a trade-off, a good combination, let's say, because uh, those uh, have good functionalities for automating and supporting you, but are also small. So this is uh, a very good uh, um, 
spread off, as I said. And uh, actually, what happens is that food with the wizard to the food, but also with others, so it can happen. Uh, you have the extensions. So let's say that you start with a very small core of the functionality that support you. But then if you want uh, new functionalities, of course, uh, Visual Studio Code support uh, um, a lot of them. So uh, actually you can also make it uh, um, also a better tool to support you. And yeah, so of course, uh, for our purposes, uh, we start with uh, the very basic uh, uh, version of uh, Visual Studio Code, and then I will introduce uh, some extension to the event pass. So, yeah. Um, so I already have a lot of extensions already. Do I just remove them? Or uh, you can just keep them, that's fine, no problem. Okay, so um, again, this is uh, to give you more information about the Visual Studio Code. Uh, this is uh, used by professional developers. It, it has been developed by Microsoft and uh, uh, it is free and open source. You have the official website link here to download it. And uh, it uh, supports also Git and GitHub that uh, we will introduce this from the for, for, um, from week four, yeah. Um, yeah, I have already said everything. Ah, this important thing. Of course, uh, <clears throat> the module, sorry, the, the, the editor that we want to consider is Visual Studio Code. But maybe some of you are more familiar with another uh, ID. So feel free in case to use the other one. But uh, of course, uh, uh, maybe I can give you less support because uh, I don't know maybe that specific tool. For instance, I know this one and I know also this one in particular Netflix very well because I was also a sector engineer for five years in a company and other ones that maybe are, are not mentioned. But of course, uh, if you use this one, for sure, I can directly support you. If you use another one, of course, uh, uh, it is up to you in case there are particular things that uh, are specific of the tool. But yeah, um, it is up to you. So let's start seeing uh, about Visual Studio Code, some uh, automatic functionalities that can support us. So uh, there is the website of IMET and the documentation that is uh, really important. So IMET is integrated in your uh, uh, in Visual Studio Code. And if you go in uh, the documentation here, you can find the syntax, et cetera, which is really important to understand how to use it. It is related to code completion. So you start typing something and then it's, it uh, supports you for completing it. Just a couple of examples. So the basic uh, example is that you open Visual Studio Code, you create an HTML, and then you type this uh, excel exclamative mark. So after putting return, this automatically generates all of this for you, which is uh, a, a common structure for HTML files. So as you can see, in one, uh, just with the one character, you obtain this, which is uh, very supportive. Other a little bit more complicated examples. So for instance, you this works for all the HTML elements. So you are you have not to type each uh, um, the full part of uh, the uh, the HTML elements, but you just put uh, write uh, like input or UL, LI, etc., and automatically it uh, completed this for you. So also this is very useful. And uh, most, in most of the cases, we will use this version because it's very quick and uh, then you can customize the rest uh, very quickly. But you can do even uh, do more, but uh, yeah, it depends on you. It can be also very complicated like this one. This one, uh, it's not too complicated. This means uh, I would like to create an input followed by a button and followed by an another list. And uh, inside the another list, thanks to this character, I want a free uh, list items. So with this line, you generate this. And imagine if you put a pair 100, you will have uh, directly 100 uh, list items. Of course, this is not the best way to do that. We can do that in other ways, but uh, just to uh, show to you which kind of spot you can get. This is a little bit crazy. So I don't think that uh, anyone will use uh, something like that because it's difficult to read. 
but maybe who knows. <laughs> So this uh, generate uh, directly this uh, uh, this code that is in practice uh, a to do list that we will see also as an example in the next uh, slides. Okay. Um, okay. Let's start uh, speaking about extensions. So uh, of course uh, we will need to have uh, local servers because we will create our application. And uh, we will run it locally, first of all. Later, it will be online. And you will see that all the parts of our application will be fully online. So the front end, back end, also uh, the database, etc. So in any case, we will start having local servers where you, your application will run. Here, there are many extensions. For instance, this one is uh, very good, mature, etc. But it's... Uh, um, it's uh, not lightweight. We need at the moment something quick to use that doesn't require too much configuration, etc. Because of course, our focus will be on the development and it and a little bit more on the administrative task for uh, the server. But later we will see also something related to that above all for the backend. So this is one option, but the option that we will use is uh, this one. That is, it is again by Microsoft. And uh, it is less mature, but lightweight. So this is fine for uh, starting uh, with something that a runner just with a command, etc. Nothing to learn more for uh, for keeping it up. And uh, pay attention that um, uh, when you look for the extensions, for instance, for this one that is called the live preview, you start clicking live, and so you have so many uh, potential things. So the point is that uh, these extension come from Microsoft, but also from third parties. So pay attention because of course there could be also some third parties that uh, can have vulnerability, can create vulnerabilities, and so can also uh, create problems in your uh, operating systems, etc. So I have put this code that are uh, the extension ID. So if you put here instead of live and having a very full, uh, very long list of elements. If you put uh, directly the extension ID, you will have the, exactly the one that we will use, which is live preview. So this is to support you in finding it. When you have this, uh, you just will need, uh, okay, I have already installed it, so I have uninstalled. You need just to click on install, and that's all. So you have it uh, installed and ready to use. Now let's see how to run it. So also this is uh, very, very easy. In practice, uh, if we come back to our, uh, you remember that uh, we have uh, generated automatically with this, uh, the code. Okay, in practice, this code with uh, that line can generate automatically this web page, a simple my to-do list. And uh, the point is that uh, now we have uh, the local server. In order to run it, uh, you need to use the command palette to open it, there are different uh, ways, like view command palette and then uh, or, or control shift T. So there are many ways to open the palette, which is this one. It is like a way, a, a place where you can start the extension, you can put other commands, like command line editor, more or less. So when we open this, we just type live preview and automatically uh, the server starts and it will load your application and you will see it uh, here. What is the advantage? Uh, the advantage, advantage also about live preview that uh, if you change something here, automatically you can see the changes uh, visually. So this is very useful, and uh, you can also enable or disable this uh, this function, etc. Anyway, I will show this more in detail in the tutorial that I will record. And then remember, of course, at the end of your activity to stop the server that is, uh, again, opening uh, the palette and typing. Uh, um, and very likely it will suggest to you because you are running this and you do stop server and it will be stopped. So we are finished with uh, the basic tool that we will use for developing. It was uh, just uh, a very quick overview. Of course, maybe some of you uh, knew already some of these aspects, maybe, uh, but for others, uh, this uh, could be very useful uh, for who starts from scratch, of course. Any questions so far? 
explain your question. So let's uh, enter uh, in the most important details about uh, this lecture. So the first thing is uh, refreshing JavaScript. And the second one is uh, uh, to uh, starting having a look at the VJS, the framework that we will use today. So the approach is this one. For practice, uh, we will create uh, our to-do app, um, to-do list app before in JavaScript and then to VJS. So you can start refreshing it uh, with JavaScript. And uh, so as you can see, this is, uh, these are, let's say, the requirements uh, written in a not very formal way, but just to understand this. So this application is uh, as follows. So it has uh, just these elements. So this is an input, this is a button, this is an order at least. And the behavior is the following one. So the user types something here and then click add. And in practice, uh, the element here will be added at the end of the list. So this is not uh, super difficult in JavaScript. So this is uh, an application that uh, uh, probably also who starts from scratch after some trials, etc., can start to understand how to do it. But uh, we will see the code just in the next slide. It is clear the behavior in DAPS, no? So just the user type here, add, and then in the last uh, item, we add uh, the element that was, uh, was here. So this is the JavaScript version, uh, not too long. Uh, so in practice, uh, apart from uh, the header that uh, can, uh, there is nothing uh, to, to say, it is uh, very similar every time, apart from aspects, some aspects. Uh, then, uh, in terms of HTML, very simple. You have uh, this header one, in practice, uh, just the title, the input that has this ID, new task. Remember it because it's important. So the identifier of this input is new task. Then you have uh, a button that, again, have an identifier add button. And then a task list that is our another list, so this list, that has ID task list. Pay attention to the ideas because we will uh, uh, use them for uh, taking these elements and for uh, manipulating them, let's say. So in the script part, in the JavaScript, what we do first of all, uh, <clears throat> uh, so you remember that the user type something and then uh, click add. So first of all, we need to, let's say, take possession to be able to man manipulate the button because uh, we need later to uh, uh, intercept the event when it is clicked to make something. So the first thing we put in this variable, uh, the add button. As you can see, we go in the document, in the web page, in practice, and uh, we try to get by ID uh, the element that has the ID add button, which is uh, this one. So now the button is here, okay, in this variable. Then we do the same for the, the task list because we need to manipulate it. So the task list is taken the same way by ID for the task list. So we take this one and now the task list is here. So in these two variables, we have the add button and the list. Now that we have the add button, we need to define a function that will be triggered when uh, in practice the button will be clicked. And we explicit this with on click. So when it is clicked the button, execute uh, this function. Uh, <clears throat> so um, now that we have uh, the button, let's say that the user clicks it. So this function is executed and what this will uh, does, this will do. In practice, uh, needs uh, to read this, uh, this content and to add it at the end of the task list. In detail, this is done in this way. So we define another variable, the task field, that in practice is the one with new task, okay? So it is the input. So again, we are putting this variable, the input. Then what we do is to start creating the element in HTML that we need to add here. And then we will take from this the content of the input. So. Again, here, not again, it's different. Uh, so here in, in this variable, we start uh, adding an li, 
So it is like other uh, uh, HTML elements, of course. In this case, it's a list item. So we will have this ready to be added here. Okay, now we need the content of the input because we need to add it to the list item that then will be added to, at the end of the list. So we have this. We read, we read the inner text, so task four in this way, checking its value. And so now text four is uh, in, a, um, in practice, we have put directly text four inside the task item. So now the task item and the list item as text four. Now it is ready to be added to the another list. In order to do that, we have a task list. You remember some here we have a get this. So in task list, we append a child. This means please put the, the item that will follow at the end of the list. So we append the task item, which is this one that you remember we got the text. And then uh, that's all in practice. Uh, we will see here task four. And then this is optional. Uh, if you want, you can uh, remove this content from task field. But you remember again, we get this before for reading a task four. But now we are putting an empty string. So this will disappear uh, from, uh, from, uh, from here. And that's all for the JavaScript version. Okay, it is uh, not uh, difficult, but uh, it has uh, many elements that uh, can be useful for refreshing, uh, um, refreshing uh, JavaScript. And uh, so, you can, if you can do this, uh, you can start, uh, let's say, in a in a good way with uh, what will follow. But uh, yeah, just ask me if you have uh, questions in the lab, etc. I will try to support you, of course. And. Uh, when we are in the lab, please uh, just do not copy and paste this. Uh, try, of course, to replicate this uh, alone by uh, checking the documentation, etc., refreshing JavaScript. But if you have uh, troubles, just uh, call me and uh, in the lab, of course, I will uh, support you. Uh, but we will see this in the next days in the lab. Okay, this is the JavaScript version. Now we will see the UJS version related to the framework that we will introduce more in detail next week. Um, <clears throat> so again, what we wanted to create is exactly the same. And uh, uh, now what happens is that you will see uh, code related to UJS, in particular this part. Don't you worry if now you do not understand uh, everything, because of course uh, we have not started the learning with uh, in the next week, we will start uh, from the basics. Now, is it's just to give you an idea of what happens with uh, this uh, small example, because then we will compare the two. Okay, so in relation to the, these are two parts. The first part about our app, the second part about our app, our small example. So, skipping that, uh, but there is something that we need to add for VJS. The HTML is uh, similar. And then uh, the part, uh, apart from one thing, the V model, that is uh, a view uh, uh, reference in practice, uh, that, uh, let's say, uh, simplifying now, this uh, will be a variable managed by VJS. And uh, in the add button, instead of putting on click, as you have seen before, what will intercept uh, the click will be directly put in the button. So as you can see, we are starting seeing that the part of the code is directly put uh, in the HTML, and later we will see how this uh, can be helpful. Now, uh, just uh, this is an output for understanding this. Then, uh, in practice, we are here we are initializing VJS, uh, an instance of VJS. So this is our VJS uh, applica application. Then uh, what we have uh, is uh, the data that we need. So as you can see, we have a new task that is exactly this one. So in this one, we are mapping. And uh, so we have uh, in this variable exactly, um, let's say we can manipulate the content of uh, the text here. Then uh, in practice, uh, what happens is that we have uh, a function that is tied to on click. So when uh, uh, it will be clicked, the add button. In practice, the add item function will be executed, okay? 
So then what you have here, it's a, a little bit simpler after doing these mappings because we go straight forward to that. In fact, here you can see that there are more lines of code here. It is a small example, but you start seeing less code at least here, in the function that is the most important part. So what we do is just straightforward. We create the item that will be added here. Then in this new item, we put the the tech, the practice the content of this one because we have already new task here. And uh, then we need, to, in any case, uh, to take the task list and we do in this way. And then uh, what we do, we execute a friend child over the task list of the new item that we have just um, uh, managed. And in the end, uh, we uh, make this empty just in this way. So as you can see, OK, now you don't know most of uh, that I have said because uh, we need to start uh, introducing UGS. But uh, at the first, sorry, at the first look, uh, as you can see, there is much more uh, JavaScript code uh, for achieving that and uh, the same uh, the solution at least in relation to the function. Etc. So, I have a yeah. question. Uh, so, we use uh, UGS two or three? We use uh, the version two. That's because uh, at the moment uh, we have the full code of the application uh, because I will go through this uh, in parallel with you. So I will uh, show in the lectures another application that is similar to the one that we will create. And at the moment, the full code is with Vue.js 3. And uh, it is a recent Vue.js 3. So maybe next year I will update it, but at the moment uh, there is not the time to do that. But that it was uh, like one hour video before I come and be free. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so, <laughs> in any case, there are not uh, too many differences between the two. So, if you learn a VJS2, then uh, VJS3 will be even easier, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just uh, to conclude the, le the lecture, so we need to compare uh, the two versions. Of course, uh, you need to pay attention that this was uh, a very small example. So we can get a limited, uh, let's say, comparison of what uh, can be done with a very large application. This is only for a simple application. So for this reason, actually, there are not too many differences. And uh, uh, the code that you have seen between uh, JavaScript and VJS, it's very similar. But as I said, in terms of length, etc., even though something is simplified as we've seen in the function. In any case, as I said, we should check this with a very big application. And also in terms of design on how we can organize our different parts, front end, back end, etc. But this is just a, a first comparison. And pay attention that in the chapter one that I suggest you to read, of course because there also we have uh, interesting aspects. Uh, in that chapter, there is a more complex example. Of course, I didn't uh, show this to you today because uh, uh, it's a more complicated and so it can get a more time. Uh, but if you compare the JavaScript version of a calculator and the JavaScript version of UJS, uh, developed with UJS, in practice, what you see is that uh, JavaScript has 124 lines of code instead of the VJS version as 45. Of course, uh, also this is not uh, a big example, but as you can see, when you start uh, doing something a little bit more, more complicated and more complicated and more complicated, you can start seeing what is the advantage about, uh, um, about VJS. Of course, uh, coding less because the framework support you, but as I said before, also the fact that you can design in a better way your application. So, yeah. Please. What is VJS exactly? Like the language, like different language. What is it? It is a framework, a JavaScript based framework. I don't understand framework. Yeah, a framework is uh, in practice, uh, let's say, <clears throat> Uh, a sort of uh, uh, system, let's say, that uh, has many ready-to-use functionalities, libraries, etc., that uh, you can uh, reuse. So in practice, if you start typing with the JavaScript, also there you have uh, 
function, etc., that you can reuse. But uh, frameworks can uh, take uh, the basics, let's say, the, uh, the functionality that are supported by a language and put them together for uh, a complete design uh, of your application, bringing you towards uh, designing with a certain approach, so with best practice, hopefully. <laughs> It depends also on the developer, of course. And so you have a more ready to use and higher level function. Also. Yeah. But we will see soon and you will understand better why it's uh, 